This time around, I take a look at privacy management, the all new security feature, which comes part of Microsoft 365. What is it? How does it work? And more importantly, what can it do for you? Let's take a look. Hi there everyone, welcome back to the channel, Andy Malone. I really appreciate you dropping by. Today I'm gonna to take a look at the all new privacy management feature in Microsoft 365, which is currently in preview. It's a really important upgrade, and I think it's a very important feature that administrators or compliance admins will definitely wanna take a look at. Now in previous versions of the product, uh, a global admin would be able to do this. A compliance admin would be able to do this. Um, things like data subject requests. Well, this is no more. Now you need to have a privacy management license. So you need to get that license and you need to assign it. So what I'm going to do in the demo is I'm going to walk you all the way through from getting hold of that license to assigning it to an appropriate administrator and then going and having a deep dive into the actual product itself. It's about 20 minutes, so I really appreciate you sticking around because there's some cool stuff in here. Uh, as always, by the way, if you've got any questions about this or any of my other sessions, please feel free to drop the comments and questions down below, and I will do my best to answer them for you. All right, uh, and in the meantime, if you've not subscribed, I really appreciate you going ahead, clicking on that subscribe button, ringing the bell, and you won't miss out on anything in the future. So, without any more jibber-jabber, let's get to the demo. So our journey into privacy manager begins here in Microsoft 365. And I'm gonna go first of all into the admin center here. Now in the admin center, first up, you need to know that as an administrator, by default, you do not have access to this feature. So one of the first things that you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to go to billing and purchase services. So in the purchase services area, if you just do a search for privacy, and you will soon see that there are a number of add-ons. And this is a brand new feature at the moment. It's called privacy management. And there are a number of different options here. So you can get a privacy manager subject rights request. There's also the full privacy manager tool and there's also a privacy manager risk trial. So you can either um, get hold of the entire product or you can, there's like kind of sub versions of this. Okay. Um, so I've already gone ahead and I've got a uh, free trial uh, of this. The next thing that you need to do is you need to go into your users and when you go into your users, I'm just going to scroll down. I'm currently logged on here with a demo account. And I've got a user here called um, the mod administrator. Okay. So if I go into the mod administrator and click on to licenses and apps, you can see here that I've gone ahead and assigned a privacy manager license. So again, if you are an administrator, if you go into this tool, it won't work for you. You need to assign the license, and that's really important. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to come down into the compliance center here, uh, and you can see in the compliance center, um, if I scroll all the way down, I now have this new area called privacy management. And first up, we get a nice overview of everything here. So it shows me everything that's going on. Now, I would like to reiterate here that this is a very, very deep role and you have access to potentially a lot of sensitive information and it should be used with great caution or and also great trust in the user. So first of all, first of all, you can see it's detected a lot of personal data. Um, I, again, I've not created any policies yet, and I've, I've only got one subject request. So data subject request, for example. So if I scroll down, I'm going to, it searches all your content and it looks for data that contains the most personal content. So, you know, things like 
you know, PII, personally identifiable information, and so on. So one of the first things you're going to want to do is if you scroll down, you can see I've got no alerts at the moment. Um, I've also got, it shows me how much personal data has been found in an organization. And it segments this out into things like Exchange, OneDrive, SharePoint, and Teams. And you can see this is just a demo. So and it's showing me all around the world where uh, the, my users are, where my data subjects are, and so on. Okay, so you can imagine when this is filled in, it's, it's a pretty cool feature. So one of the first places that we go is we have a look at a data profile. And you can see here that it's detected lots of personal data in various Microsoft 365 locations. First up, you'll notice that the this is currently in customer preview. So this is not fully live yet, although you can trial it and try it out. So you can see that we've got a lot of personal data in SharePoint, Teams, Exchange, and also in OneDrive as well. And again, you can it shows you how many items here, so how many different personal data types here, and it categorizes those as well. So top personal data across your organization, um, and you can see... Um, what kind of personal data it is. So again, I've got some New Zealand uh, Ministry of Health uh, numbers, which is like your social security number. You've got things like credit card numbers, uh, EU debit card numbers. So if you're using sensitivity labels, um, compliance labels, this will pick up all of that information. And you can see here that it's breaking this information down. And you can click onto this and immediately it will break the, those locations down for you. So it will show you that there's 40 in OneDrive, there's five in Exchange and, sh and so on. And you can export that information out and you can uh, obviously uh, do a little bit of investigating on that just to make sure it's all looking good. So if I head back then into here, um, again, I can scroll down. It's showing me where the vast majority of my data is located. And this demo tenant is currently held in the United States. Now, the, another thing that you, this tool also does, by the way, just before you go into this any further, one thing that you probably want to do is take a look in the settings area here at the top. Now, uh, again, a number of Microsoft's compliance policies or products have this in. Some countries, some customers get very nervous about pulling out reports that contain user information. So one of the things that you can do is you can choose to either show anonymized versions. So, for example, anony at mycompany.onmicrosoft.com or you can show actual the names of people. Again, again, depending on the size of your the type of your organization, you can choose one of those options. Um, another thing is user notifications. So, for example, if there is a de this is really cool. So, if it detects that you have got personal information stored in Microsoft 365 it will automatically send a notification uh, to the user, just reminding you that you have that sensitive information in there. Um, likewise, if you're using Teams, again, it will also, you can turn on Teams capabilities uh, for things like data subject rights. So if you want to, if somebody says, I would like a copy of all my personal data, again, one of the things that we can do is pull that down. Now, in the old version of security and compliance, a regular security or compliance administrator do this. Now, Microsoft, what they've done is because of the sensitivity involved here, they are um, splitting that. So a regular administrator, a, a global admin even, will not be able to access that content. Um, data matching. So you can you can create what we call a personal data scheme, um, and this is a structure for describing the various attributes of your data subjects. So, for example, employee IDs. You might want to have your your kind of own labeling here, 
and you can add in the different labels here. There are also some examples. Now, when you add these in, they need to come in XML format. And here is a perfect example. So the schema, the object schema here, which is the complete set of data objects, it tells me, okay, what is, so for example, in this case, uh, this is a patient record. You get a description for it. And again, you can have different uh, um, different versions as well, if you like. Um, you can also, it allows you to identify the primary field, which in this case is our patient ID number. And also you can have a UPN. So the UPN, of course, is our username, a u um, user principal name. So andy at mycompany.com, for example. And you can see that that's then separated. So this is kind of the structure of your data. So once you've got the structure of your data, you can see you've got patient ID and it is it searchable. So is the user able to search for a patient ID? So again, you've got first name, last name, social security number. And these are basically the different fields, the different attributes. OK, so essentially you can copy this uh, and paste that into here and you can then just amend it if you want to. So, again, some of the um, instructions here are really good for that, by the way. And although it looks kind of complex, it's actually not. Now, if you've already got your own schemas and object types, you can update those here as well. Um, the other thing that we also have are data review tags. So for reviewing certain types of data, again, here you can see there's a few uh, kind of pre-created ones. So things like follow up, delete, update, and so on. But you also have custom tags here. So again, I can go ahead and edit my own custom tag and you can add in additional ones there as well. So those are just some of the settings there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back into my data uh, profile and I'm now going to click on the policies tab. And this is where the privacy management policies are really cool, by the way. So when I click on policies, um, again, I don't, uh, well, in actual fact, there are a couple of default policies. There's a number of default policies here that, you, that are pre-created for you. But you can go in and I can say, OK, I'm going to go ahead and create a policy. So we've got a, a number of different templates. So are you looking for overexposed data? Are you looking for um, things like data tra uh, transfers? So this prevents tra uh, travelers across departments or regional borders. So this ensures, for example, if you had uh, a government responsibility to maintain data in Japan, that it actually stays in Japan. And this is awesome, by the way. Um, before, we never had anything like this. Things like data minimization. So find and delete unused personal data. So kind of data that really shouldn't be in, in your Azure Active Directory or in your Microsoft 365. And you can also create a custom uh, solution here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this one. Um, I want to secure overexposed data. So I can, I can go ahead and click on this. And it, it creates a default name. So I can, I can call it uh, policy number one, for example. And I'm going to go ahead and create this. So it just takes a couple of minutes. All right, and if I scroll down, you can now see that default policy is in. And first of all, you'll notice that it's gone into the testing area first up. So if I click onto this policy, let's have a quick look at it. So it's testing, and this is using AI and machine learning. Now, what that means is, again, I'm, I'll go back and check for some insights a little bit later. Let's see if we've got one that's already been done. So after it's been tested, it learns your environment. So it's a little bit like um, antivirus file signatures. It learns what's normal uh, within your organization. Um, so here is one that's gone live. 
Um, this is a data minimization solution, and you can see that this policy is actually on. It's not discovered anything. Everything's looking good. I've only got some sample data in here, but this is a it's a very cool uh, feature. All right, and it will obviously find some uh, details here. Um, okay, so that is that policy. So again, you can have multiple policies um, again, and you can see it shows me whether one is in testing and how many are actually in uh, actual production. Now, if it does find anything that is suspicious, it will flag up an alert here as well. And again, alerts also create issues. Finally, one of the very nice features about this is the fact that I can do a data subject write. So for my data subject request, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my Microsoft 365 Admin Center here, and I'm going to select a user. I'm going to choose Adele. So I will just copy Adele's username here and just copy that. So it's looking good. And I'm going to head back into privacy management. Now, for a subject rights request, this is a really nice feature. So I'm going to click into here. And it first of all, it asks you to add a data subject. So, of course, I'm going to add in Adele's name. So that's in there. And her name, her name is Adele and uh, Adele Vance. So just put in her name here. And it then asks me, okay, which country is Adele's data currently resident in? Now, this particular tenant is um, uh, homed actually in the United States. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on the United States here. So I'm going to click on Add. And then it says, okay, what's the relation to the company? So is she a customer? Is it a current employee, former? perspective or another category that you can add in. So I'm going to say for the purpose of this demo that she is a current employee. Now it now says, okay, do you want options? Do you want for your search? So do you want to scope your search? So look for specific things or just kind of everything. Um, do you want to in, um, include any content where the data subject is the author? Mm, yes, that sounds like a good idea. Uh, do you want to wait for an admin to manually start the content retrieval, or do you want to automate it? So in this case, I'm just going to automate it, and I'm just going to click on Next and accept those settings. Um, now, it says here, um, does Adele have any nicknames? So obviously, when it's searching through the content, um, she might have some kind of nickname. So you know, Andy becomes Andrew and things like that. Um, I've got the email address here. Again, if you wanted to have multiple, you could do that. You just separate them with a, a comma. Um, other things that you can also put in, you can put in, for example, if the employee's got an ID number or something like that. And again, you can put in an address if you want to search by an address. So this is really powerful stuff. So I'm going to click on next and it then says, OK, what conditions are you looking for? So are you looking for content within a certain time frame? So, for example, if it was a past employee, are you looking for something in specific size, a retention label, for example, any participants, any recipients? So is the issue the recipient of an email, for example? Uh, send and receive to and from something contains a subject so you can search for specific content or kind of just everything so for the purpose of this demo I'm just going to go ahead and click next and you can see it now says okay exactly what do you want me to search so OneDrive Teams SharePoint and Exchange and you can see it's looking at the I can go ahead and choose um, specific things, but at the moment it's just selected everything. Okay, what type of request are you looking for? So are you looking, uh, do you want just kind of an overview, kind of uh, the data in the organization? Do you want to do a full export of the content? Um, or do you want to do a tagged list uh, for follow-up? So again, for security reasons, 
you know, you said, hey, you know, I wanted to have a copy of this, but hang on, maybe I need to get it authorized or followed up or checked. Um, does this request relate to a specific privacy regulation? So if it did, you can choose the privacy regulation here. Yes. So, you know, the PII, you know, HIPAA, some, you know, the Data Protection Act, GDPR, something like that. For the purpose of this demo, I'll just say no. And then it asks you for today's date and you just simply click on next. So give the job a name. You can put in a description and finally click next and off I go and I create the subject request. OK, so the, the request has been created. Uh, I'm going to click on done and you can see um, I've got currently I've got two requests in so I can go in and I can have a look at that. So first up, I'm going to have a look at Adele's um, data subject request. And I get a general description. Um, it shows me how much data is estimated, um, how much data is collected. Uh, and you can see what it's doing is it's now going through and it's starting to collect that data. Now, obviously, depending on the size of, you know, uh, you know how much data she's actually had, that will come through. Um, what you can then do is you can it will then generate a report. You, of course, can add in notes if you want to. So you can, for example, add a case note, reason why she's getting her data subject. And this is kind of cool as well. Um, so it will you can also add collaborators. So, for example, if Adele had a manager or a supervisor or somebody you feel it's important to collaborate, you can add those. Uh, in here. And that's essentially what a data subject uh, request actually does. All right. So a little bit different than what it was in previous versions of Microsoft 365. Um, now, if I go into Deborah's account here, this is one I created previously. You can see it's currently retrieving data and that can, let's see if any come in. No, it can take a little bit of time um, depending on, again, how much data they've, they've got. But eventually this, in, it will tell you how many items have been found again. And you can also review those items. You can actually, uh, you know, take a look at those items as well. All right. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the privacy management subject request preview. OK, very, very nice and really powerful uh, set of tools. So if I head back into the overview here, you can see I've now got two subject requests in. Um, you can see how many items, uh, how many content out, uh, owners it's found out. Um, you can see items that contain personal data. So one of the things you might like to do is actually review that data. And here you can see all the data that, you know, you've got that's owned by lot, all these different users within the organization. And the idea of this is I can click onto one of these and check it out. You actually can read the data. You can see the details. So um, again, this might it might contain personal content. It might contain um, you know um, phone numbers, email addresses. Um, it might contain credit card numbers, and so on. Um, again, I can click onto details. It shows me the link. Um, it shows me who the content owner is, and if there's any kind of um, uh, content. Um, any restrictions also shows me the full name um, medical information terms diseases so this could be you know quite sensitive information so again you can uh, Matt you can go into full screen with that um, so the fact that this is there you might want to then contact this person you maybe want to set up some kind of uh, labeling and classification with this um, again really really important um, that, you know, you protect this uh, sensitive data. Um, OK, so that is a, a, an example of that. You can then obviously combine that with the likes of um, data loss prevention 
um, and also sensitivity labels. So there you have it, privacy management, which comes part of Microsoft 365. I really hope that you enjoyed it and you got something out of it. As always, comments, questions, get them down below and I'll do my best to uh, answer them for you. And as always, if you've not subscribed, click on that subscribe button up there, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on anything. So until next time, I really appreciate you dropping by and you stay safe. Thanks for dropping by, hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and click on the subscribe button and ring that bell and you won't miss a thing. See you next time.